Welcome to Lifestyle with Neeraj. The story of the Jeep Wrangler began with the Second World War when the US Army contacted car manufacturers to produce a multi-purpose vehicle capable of off-road capabilities. Only two car companies responded, the American Bantam and Willis Overland. The American Bantam company contacted Carl Probst, a freelance engineer, to design the vehicle. Probst is credited with the first model of the Jeep as we know it today in 1940. The American Bantam Company submitted the design to the US Army, which was approved. However, the Army felt that the company was too small to supply enough units for the war effort and passed on the designs to Willis Overland and Ford. These two companies supplied all the Jeeps used by the Allies in World War II. Willis Overland provided the same vehicle for civilian use after the war. Keep in mind that the designs used were the same as the ones created by Probst for American Bantam. American Bantam was formerly the American Austin Car Company which provided cars licensed under British Austin. The Jeep was later acquired by American Motors Corporation and then by Chrysler in 1987. It is now owned by Fiat Chrysler. The Jeep Wrangler has continued the original look of the World War II, multi-purpose vehicle, which came into mass production in 1941. The 70th anniversary edition was released in 2011. It contained a number of upgrades limited mainly to the interior. The powertrain and exterior design were carried over without significant changes. The list of interior changes is impressive including perforated leather seats, leather wrapped steering wheel, chrome covered shift knob, aluminum door sills, and 70th anniversary logo inserts in the seat bags. The powertrain includes a 3.8 liter V6 engine that produces 202 horsepower and 237 pound foot of torque. As you know, the Wrangler is a four wheel drive vehicle, unlike modern all wheel drive mechanisms. Four wheel drive drivetrains tend to be used on truck based vehicles and are particularly suited for off road capabilities. An all wheel drive mechanism provides power to all four wheels at all times which has an advantage in slippery road conditions such as heavy rain or snow. You cannot expect to get the performance of Mercedes 4Matic or Audi's Quattro for handling on snow. However, a notable advantage of four-wheel drive vehicles is the high clearance to go over obstacles including large piles of snow at the foot of your driveway. Note also that a four-wheel drive vehicle cannot be left in four-wheel drive on hard drive pavement since the front and rear tires need to travel at different speeds when turning. Four-wheel drive is an advantage if you drive on unpaved dirt roads. Only the rear wheels are powered when the Jeep is out of four-wheel drive. The interior of my Wrangler is upscale and well-designed. 
It has the usual Jeep touches such as controls for the side windows located in the center of the dash, a large grab bar over the glove compartment to assist entry and exit for the passenger, air vents that can be closed completely to prevent insects from crawling in in case you are in the woods, and locking glove box and center console. This model has heated front seats. The sound system is very adequate with a dedicated sub in the rear. You may not realize that there are plugs under the floor mats to drain water in case the car gets flooded for all the times that you need to ford a river. The back seats are suitable for children only. They cannot be accessed by many individuals except by climbing over the rear tires. The back seat can be folded ahead creating plenty of cargo space. In this way large items can be transported with the top off. As you know, the Freedom Roof can be removed easily by undoing the latches and lock pins on the inside of the vehicle. The top can be removed using the bolts on the side. This is a two-person job. Since it is a fair bit of work to replace the top, I store the vehicle in the garage out of the hot sun and rain. You can also buy a soft cover for the rain. The drive improves significantly with the top down since the center of gravity is lower. This vehicle has Bluetooth capability which is great for hands-free calling. It also Bluetooths music off the phone which is particularly useful. The media system and phone can be controlled from the steering wheel. Another great feature is the powerful heater built for our North American winters. You cannot get this level of heating in many European cars costing three times as much. I do not have a heated steering wheel, however. As you can see, I have made some modifications to the exterior. I have installed a lift kit. This makes the vehicle larger and provides more ground clearance. The main advantage, of course, is that I could install large larger tires and wheels to give it a more aggressive look. The main disadvantage of a lift kit is that it raises the center of gravity so that control deteriorates at higher speeds. I avoid driving at speeds exceeding 100 to 110 kilometers per hour for that reason. You have to slow down well before entering any corner with this vehicle. The 2018 model of Jeep Rubicon has raised fenders because Jeep knows that most owners prefer larger tires. I have Dick Pack off-road tires mounted on 17-inch wheels. The wheels can be ordered from TireRack.com. They are XD series type 797 in black finish. Obviously the salt and snow would ruin these wheels in a single winter. So I switched to a dedicated set of wheels and tires for winter driving. Fuel economy has deteriorated with these modifications. I average 13 to 14 liters per 100 kilometers for mixed city and highway driving. Fortunately, this Jeep takes regular gas. I have other horses in the stable, but frankly, this one gets the most compliments. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, please share it with your family and friends.